Welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over resource meta arguments. And meta arguments on a resource allow you to, you know, perform different actions on that resource. These are reserved attribute names um, inside the, the resource, and they are, they are specified inside the resource block here. So let's take a look at some of the, the arguments we can add. So here, here's a list. So we have depends on. So you could specify depends on, which is will specifically allow, make sure that uh, a resource is is something happens after a different resource is created. Uh, most of the time, Terraform can automatically figure out what dependencies are for each um, for each resource. But sometimes you may have to explicitly specify that. All right, this resource has to be created after this other resource. So you can specify that. Uh, then you have count. Count will allow you to specify how many instances of the resource do you want created. Uh, and you can just specify a number. For each will allow you to you know, specify a map or a set of strings and, and create multiple resources that way. And this is all, all in uh, one block. Uh, then you have a provider. A provider is allows you to specify a a provider outside of the, the default provider. So your, your main provider could be AWS uh, US West 2, but maybe you want this resource created in US East 1. You could specify that. The life cycle is, uh, there's a few different things that are involved in the life cycle. Uh, one thing you can do is you can make sure that uh, like something gets a resource before it gets destroyed that it automatically creates that resource again because maybe you know something else in your your configuration depends on that and you need to uh, create before destroy is one of the arguments and then the next the last one is provisioner provisioner allows you to run commands against the infrastructure that's been created after it's been provisioned uh, so terraform doesn't advice using this this is kind of a last resort but basically it allows you to you can run shell commands on the like so you, you created a an ec2 instance or a vm uh, once that's created it will you can you can specify like a shell command to execute and it would run that but let's go over some of these the, the, some of the most popular ones are going to be count for each and provider and lifecycle let's show some examples of count so i've got my basic basic resource here but let's say we want, you know, we want two instances of this. So if we wanted two instances of like this identical resource, you know, we would have to copy and paste and, and do that. Well, that that's not uh, that's not that's not good practice. You don't want to copy and paste code. So what you can do is you can specify a count. So this count is specific is is a reserved word uh, in Terraform. So you can specify count on how many, how many instances of this resource do you want? So you can say, I want two. So now instead of creating this one instance, it's going to create two instances. So that's kind of cool. And when you do use the count, you're able to get an index of what, um, what resource or what at what spot in the count are you. So it's kind of kind of like a for loop if you're if you're familiar with other programming language languages, but let's 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 uh, create this so you can have an example. Let's add some tags to this and, and add a name. So we can set name equal to. Let's see. Let's just do test, and then we can do count. So count here, and then do index. And this will give us the, the current account that it's on and do that. So let, let's create this. So right now, what this is going to do, this count is saying, let's create two AWS instances. So we should get a name of test one and test two. So let's see what happens. And this will take a minute to create. All right, so that's, those are created. So let's go to the portal and see if they are there. All 
All right, so they are. So you see how it's test, test one, and test zero? So, that, so that's the index. So it starts at zero, uh, just like most programming languages. When you have a, a list or an array of something, it starts at zero. So we have test zero and test one. So that's pretty cool. So we're able to say, you know, create two instances. You know, and this number here, this might be dynamic. You might pass this in through a variable. Um, so you can do that. You can also specify a count of zero. So if you're dynamically doing some something, um, and if you didn't if you didn't want this resource to run or be created at all, you can specify zero uh, so that it doesn't it doesn't get created. So that could be you know you could maybe use somehow you're you're you have a configuration that you're specifying in the and you could set a variable like var you know instance count or something, and your instance count could be dynamically done by you know however many you need. And if you needed zero, you specify zero. So cool. So we got two. Um, the other thing with, with count is, if you remember, you know, remember when you have to access a resource? Usually we would do. Let's let's do an output of you know instance. Output of instance. You know, usually you would take the the resource name. So AWS instance dot web. Like that, and that, and that would usually work because usually when you just do a resource by itself, it returns, you know, just just the result of that that single instance. But since now we've created multiple instances, it returns us a list of of the instances. So what you can do, there's different ways. So so if we wanted to access the first instance, we could do web. Um, let's see. Uh, zero for the zero index dot say public IP so we could do that um, let's just echo that out so we can kind of see so this gives us the first the IP address of the first instance and only the first instance um, but there's also uh, terraform has a thing called splat operators so what we can do if we wanted to get the public IP of all of the instances what we can actually do, instead of specifying an index here, we can specify an asterisk. And what that does is that basically just returns a list. So let's save that and run it. All right, so now we have a, a list of, of IPs. So that's pretty cool. So you, so you can kind of um, you know do that if you want. Uh, that, that's very, very helpful on, on the splat operator, depending on, depending on what you want to do with your output of this. So keep that in mind. You can also do a, a for loop if you needed to. So you can specify for, and then you can do like instance in AWS instance dot web. So here's your, your main output here. And then you can kind of, um, then you have the instance itself, the, the single instance right here, kind of like a regular uh, loop in programming languages. Um, you want to use the, the splat operator over the four if you can for the most part, but if you want, if you needed to use the four, uh, you, you have it available, available. So then we can do instance, which is here. This is one instance of this, and then dot public IP. And we can do it that way. That's the same as what we just did here as well. So, so yeah, so keep that in mind uh, on that. So that's that's kind of the basics of count. Let's move on to the for each, and let's let's destroy this for now, just so we we have a clean slate. Slate. And once that's done, we'll get started. All right, so that's destroyed. So let's uh, let's see. Let's remove some of this. Let's remove the count. Let's go to four each. And and before we go on, the a reason you would use count over four each is count would be used for if the instances are are almost identical to each other, and not much needs to change because you see with the count you only have like a a number you can specify. 
But with for each, you can you can specify um, things a little bit. You can specify more details per se. So so let's let's go over that now. So for each, just like regular. And now what we want to do is we want to specify a a map of values. And a map you can think of like a um, a dictionary in Python or an object in JavaScript. Um, so let's say on this instance, you know, let's say we wanted to create two instances, but we wanted to have two different instance types here. So, so what we can do is we can set a key and a value. So let's just set like, and the, the key, and, key can be anything, and the value can be anything as well. Let's just say like, you know, I don't know, th this is a bad example, but let's say, let's say prod and dev. You know, let's say prod, we're going to do a t2 dot large. And then dev, we're going to do a t2 dot micro. You know, you probably wouldn't want to do your prod and dev like this, but this is merely an example. Um, so you can specify the for each like that here. And then what we do is then this loops through each key value pair. So this is going to be, this is going to be one loop. And then this is going to be another loop. You know, if we added another, you know, thing here, sandbox or something, this would be a third loop. But let's just create two. And what we can do is when you do a for each, you have access to the key and the value. And what, what Terraform does is they, they, they reserve the each word here. So each right here is an instance of this rec is one of these records. So what we can do to, for the instance type, we can do um, each dot value, which will which will be this value here. So we have each. Each is a reserved word on each iteration, and then value is is going to be the value of of here. And then it also has as a key value. Identifier. So, so previously we did count dot index. Well, here we can do each dot key. So the key and value are reserved on, on this. So now we should get test prod and test dev when we run this as the name, and then one should have a t two large for the prod and t two micro for the dev. So let's let let's. Uh, run that now. And this will take a minute to create. Oh, what did I do? Oh, I left in um, the old output. All right, so those are created. Let's go to the interface and see what we've got. So let's refresh this. All right, perfect. So we've got, you know, we've got our test prod and our test dev. And our test dev has the T2 micro, and our prod has the T2 large. Perfect. So that's that's what we specified here. So awesome. So just like with the, the count, the way you access, if you wanted to access an instance here, what we can do, we can do is let's, let's go, let's output it here. Uh, you know, foo. Let's do value, and then what we can do is AWS instance, instead of before we did zero, what we can do here is we can do prod. So we can access our key to access it here, and then let's do public IP. Let's see if that works. Nope. Oh, I had a typo here, so we have to do awinsense.web prod. So now you see how we have foo, and this this was just the prod IP. So if we have 13132, we should see on prod we have 13132. So that only outputted the prod the prod instance. So cool. So you can kind of see that that's kind of how you would access a dictionary in um, Python or an object in JavaScript.
Perfect. So that's four each. Uh, you would never use four each or count inside of the same resource at the same time. Terraform would actually allow you to do that. So you wouldn't you wouldn't have four each there and then count you know two. That it just wouldn't make sense. So just keep that in mind. All right. Let's see what do we want to go over next. If you got that, let's go over a provider. So providers are pretty cool. Um, these these might entail its its own video, but by default, when you create a a new resource, you know, let me uh, remove this. When you create a new resource, uh, Terraform uses the provider here and creates it in that provider. Like, or let's say we're using AWS, you know, inside of that region. So when we create this instance here, we're saying it's going to default and create to US West 2. But maybe we have, you know, we have this instance. So let me actually keep that here. So we have this instance, but maybe we want another instance, but we want to create it in US East 1. So what we can do is let's specify another resource. You know, let's do AWS instance. And let's do like East. Let's just say, you know, foo let's just do web east here and what we want to do is we're going to need an ami and since we're using we're going to use the east one this ami is not going to be valid so let me let me find a valid ami let's see and i'm just going to take oh let's switch to us east one All right, so let's let's grab this. Oh, let's zoom one away on me. All right, so we're gonna grab this one, and we'll use we'll use that here. And then our instance type we can do t two micro. But as usual, but what we want to do now is we want to specify a provider. See if I can spell it correctly. So the provider, this this is a reserved at ar argument um, for this for the resources, all resources. But instead of defaulting to this US West two, what we want to do is we want to do US East one. So let's let's do that now. So what we have to do is we have to specify another provider block, and what we can do. It just set it to AWS as well. And now what, what we have is we can specify an alias on it. So this alias kind of just scopes it and says it gives it a, a unique name here. And we can just say East. This could be foobar if you want. It doesn't it doesn't matter what you call it. But we're just gonna call it East. And then here we're gonna specify the region. And let's do US East one. All right. So by default, you know, this this one takes precedence here. But what we can do here is do provider, we can do AWS dot then the alias. So you're gonna have the provider name here and then the and then the alias, so east. So now what should happen is, let's make sure I don't have any instances in US East. And I don't. So let, let's create that now. And this might take take a, a couple minutes. But now we should retain our, our instances in US West 2 and, and have also have an instance in US East 1. Let's give it a tag just so we have a name of East Test. Now let's, let's, let's run this. And of course, we got an error. Do tags. All right, so that's done. So let's check and see if we've got a resource here. And we do East Test. So that works. So we have our, our resource in East Test. And let's let's make sure we still have our other resources, which we do. We have our dev and our prod. Perfect. So that's how you can kind of run, you know, if you need to work with multiple regions as well. So, you know, you'll use this uh, 
using data sources as well, you, you can specify a provider like this inside of a, a data block as well. So if you wanted to fetch data from one region, but create something in a different region, you could, you could easily do that. Um, so perfect. So next thing let's go over is a little bit about uh, lifecycle policies. So let me destroy this. Actually, we don't need to destroy it. So let's just, I'm just gonna give you an example. I'm not gonna run the lifecycle policies, but let's say, you know, you can have a lifecycle policy block like this. Uh, right here. So then uh, one thing you can do is you can do create before destroy equal to true. And what that will do is if, if you have like an existing infrastructure and, and you're doing something, uh, this I've had this happen on security groups before um, and, and, and such. So it'll just basically make sure that before it destroys this instance, it will create another one uh, before it does the destroy. So, at so as this is running, you'll actually have two identical instances at the same time. So you have to be careful on what you run this on because they, they have to be unique in some way. So, so keep that in mind. Um, once you, if you run into errors at one point in your, your Terraform code and you're not sure why something's working and you get something like, oh, this resource can't be destroyed or something, you, you probably need to create before it destroy. Another thing that you can use in the life cycle is prevent destroy. And what that does is that will that will prevent the the resource from being destroyed. So you can kind of set that as a as an extra you know layer of um, just prevention to to make sure you don't like destroy something. So maybe you had an RDS instance or some kind of Postgres database instance or something. You know you could set this on there to just make sure you don't accidentally like do Terraform destroy. And you destroy everything, and you just lost your database. <laughs> um, another thing you might have put that on is like a S3 bucket or or something like that, or a storage blob in Azure. And then the last one that you can do is ignore changes. And what this does is this this takes a an array. So one thing you can do is like maybe you don't want to track change it, tr track like. Um, different things. So, so maybe like we added the East test here and then we went into here and we added a tag through the interface here. So we could add, you know, something like foo bar and save. Well, now that's not tracked inside Terraform. So some, this was manually added through the portal, but what's going to happen is, is Terraform is going to, going to see that and try to pull it into the state. So what you can do is you can you can specify like tags here to to ignore the changes. Um, so so just keep that in mind. That's something you can you can read up a little bit more on 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 the life cycles on what you can do for the ignore changes. Um, and here's a nice example as well. And you can also ignore based on the like a tag itself, but it doesn't have to be a tag. Um, it can be other attributes. It, it could be, you know, instance type and things like that. So keep that in mind. All right. So let's see if there's anything else we need to go over. There's depends on, but you can you can kind of you know infer that yourself uh, on all of that. And then provisioners. I'm gonna hope make a whole video on provisioning. Um, it's not recommended to do, but there might be cases where you would need it. Uh, but I'll create a separate video to do that. Uh, so make sure you hit the subscribe button below and I will see you in the next video.